thank you. How's everyone doing? You alright? Cool. Great to be back at London's foremost Nazi comedy night. Um, uh, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if you've followed certain sections of the media, but this is where all the hip young Nazis hang out. So uh, that's cool. This is, if Hitler came back, this is what he'd do, by the way. He'd start a monthly comedy night on a Tuesday. So uh, <laughs> he'd warm you up with a few dick jokes and bam, hit you with the juice off. So. Um, <laughs> And then you'll be like, oh, I'm confused. I don't like some of his policies, but his jokes are so well crafted. Anyway, <laughs> basically, I'm Hitler, is what I'm saying. So, I'm not. <laughs> don't put that on the YouTube channel. All right, we'll start again. I'm, I'm Nick Dixon, everyone, if you haven't seen me before, um, or if you have, same name. Uh, <laughs> I don't change it every gig. I'm trying to build a brand, do you know what I mean? People hear my name, Nick Dixon, in cool areas of East London. They'll be like, oh, your nickname at school must have been Dick Nixon, like the American president. That's what I can tell those people about a proper education, all right? Because I went to a comprehensive in the North. My nickname was Pufter. Um, <laughs> cheers. Not gay, obvs. That's just how it was in North. Everything was gay at my school. I did English. That was gay at my school. I did music, that was gay, apparently. I did Stephen, that was, uh, that was... That was amazing. Um, all right, first joke, nailed it. Um, my comedy's not that unleashed, guys. It's a bit leashed, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I've just been... The BBC's had a bit of a bashing tonight, hasn't it? I was on a... I was actually on the BBC in October on Sunday Morning Live, and they still owe me 100 quid. What's all that about? It's fair enough, isn't it? The revenue last year was only nearly 5 billion. Do you know what I mean? But the, the good news is I haven't paid the TV licence, so I was like, tell you what, I'll give you 54 quid, call it quits. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> so a bit of a showbiz boast. I've also just been in LA, which is a bit of a boast when you're in show business, which is what this is. Welcome to show business. Uh, don't be intimidated by the expensive set design. This is all, uh, this is all CGI. So uh, <laughs> Pixar did that for us. So no idea what that is. But um, <laughs> I like telling people about LA. I was in a Tesco the other day. I was going, oh, sorry, I've only got dollars. Just been in LA. <laughs> I know, I was at a self-service, didn't need to say anything really. So, so. Then I stole a sandwich and ran away, but um, you what? What was I doing in LA? Oh, great question. Um, it's nice, wasn't it? No, no one spoke was the joke there. So, um, uh, uh, irony. Um, people, I managed to get a girlfriend in LA, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Someone just laughed at the very idea of me having a girlfriend. What a legend. Um, no, it's fine. Yeah, I had a girlfriend in LA. Checked on it. It's 5,000 miles away. Uh, pretty wide uh, Tinder radius I set on that one. It's... Uh, <laughs> no, we met in real life. IRL, as the kids say. And we, uh, we, did, we did a long distance relationship. The only problem with a long distance relationship, when you are going out with a beautiful woman 5,000 miles away, you do worry about infidelity. You know, will she find out? Uh, <laughs> Lol. Guys, I'm joking. I would never cheat. In fact, the point I'm trying to get to is that I actually got engaged. How about that? That's a real fact for my life. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah, and then we broke up a while ago, but thanks. Um, <laughs> thanks anyway. No, it's fine. I'm over it. Don't know why you brought it up. It's... Uh, <laughs> I, did, I went for, I did properly. I got a nice ring and everything. It's quite expensive. I read this recently, though, in the GQ magazine. There's a forgotten tradition where the woman is supposed to buy the man a watch one-third the value of the ring. Did you know that? That's how I got this. Check it out. <laughs> Casio, eight quid if you want one of those. I love that a couple of fucking men's rights activists at the back started clapping that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Only at this gig. Yes, you should fucking pay. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, this is great. I got this from a top jeweler called Argos. It's, uh, it's uh, water resistant, that, and women resistant, so I'm smashing it. But, uh, <laughs> It's, uh, look, I'm living on my own now. I like it. It's great. I love it. Just single living on my own. Just playing a lot of FIFA and stuff. It's good. No, but I'm actually I'm managing the whole team, so it's quite a lot of responsibility. Um, <laughs> oh, such an insult. Anyway, um, I'm not an insult. That's, that's apparently that's a group of men called involuntary celibates. I had no idea back in school I was pioneering a movement. But anyway, I'm not. But I am living on my own. There are little things I miss about living with a woman. Just little things, you know what I mean? Like curling up on the sofa, watching Netflix while she cleaned the flat. Just little, little... <laughs> <laughs> Just little things she'd do around the house, like pay rent. Just little touches. <laughs> it's those... I love that joke, because it sounds misogynist, then she's paying rent, so she's empowered, you see. So, uh... <laughs> 
facials are a bit more empowered, I'd be have more money by now. But anyway, the point is, I'm single again. Everyone tells me, oh, you've got to get back out there. You've got to get back out there. I don't want to get back out there. I just want to stay at home playing FIFA. Because it's, it's a harsh world out there. You think in this world of body shame, and it would be different, but it's not. It's very hard. People say exactly what they want online. Women are obsessed with height, I found out recently. I'm five, nine and a half, so I'm smashing it. But like... <laughs> That's above average, mate. Women are obsessed with height. <laughs> Men aren't bothered about height. My ex-girlfriend was four foot eleven. I didn't even notice because she had amazing uh, personality. And, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> women are obsessed. I'll tell you how I know. I had a date lined up with a hot chick. This was a while ago when I was thinner. And uh, she messaged me just before the date. It's a true story. She goes, wait, wait, how tall are you? I'm like, why? Are we going on a fairground ride? Like, why is it? <laughs> I actually, I actually texted that back, so I'm a bit of a legend. And, uh, <laughs> bit of a legend. Ruined the day, but it was funny. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, ideally, I need someone over six foot, because I'm five six, but I often wear heels. I'm like, you can't do that, can you? Like, yeah, I'm five nine, but I'm often on horseback. Uh, yeah, so you must be eight foot two, and uh, really good at running fast. That's what I need. Must. <laughs> Must eat mainly sugar cubes, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> the other big one is ghosting now, isn't it? That's the big thing. Do you know, have you ever been ghosted? No. No? Oh, it's top lad. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, have you ever ghosted anyone? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you don't know what ghosting is, it's where you're messaging someone, it's going fine, then they just suddenly don't get back to you. And you're like, okay, fine, guess that's it. I'm just gonna walk away. It's been six yeah. years, I've got my pride. Um, <laughs> Six years is the cutoff for me. And, uh, but I don't know why it's called ghosting, because that's not how ghosts behave, is it? Like, in, if anything, in my experience, ghosts outstay their welcome, if anything. They keep bothering you even after they're dead. That's about as needy as it gets, if you ask me. Should be like, oh, I ghosted someone the other day. Oh, what, you didn't get back to them? No, no, I showed up at their house late at night and started messing around in the kitchen. <laughs> banging pots and stuff. Like, I think that's called stalking, mate. That's stalking. <laughs> How boring would Ghostbusters have been? Just a two-hour movie about spoiled millennials ignoring each other. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to call? No one. I'm just going to leave, actually. Um, <laughs> clever joke. Got one clap. Smashed it. <laughs> well, I forced you to do that, but I'll take it anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so this, I'm, my engagement didn't work out. I, I, sort of, I feel a bit bad for sort of wasting two years of this woman's life. Then I realised the other day Philip Schofield wasted 27 years of a woman's life. So I was like, what? Whoa! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hang on, I mean, he is very brave. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you what? That was unleashed. That bit, I'll give you that. That was unleashed. Um, I'm back leashed again now, but um, I'll tell you when I'm changing. But yeah, it's um, no, it, come on, it's bullshit. But anyway, um, yeah, I felt a bit bad because I was together with this woman a couple of years, didn't work out, so I'm uh, I'm back on the porn. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I never stopped. Um, I tried. I didn't try really. It's impossible, isn't it? My friend said to me, "You've got to stop watching porn, Nick. It's terrible for you. It's a terrible industry." That was a woman of no man's ever had that conversation with another. Unless it's like, mate, you've got to stop watching all that porn. All right, seriously, using up all the broadband. All right. And I'm, I'm actually trying to watch some porn here. So if you could slow down your porn for my porn, you've seen the porn rotor. It's Tuesday. <laughs> That's what I thought all men were like. Then my friend goes to me, she goes, well, my husband has never watched porn. And that blew my mind. I respect that. It takes a lot of discipline, doesn't it, to just lie to your wife every day. <laughs> bashing out the lies. It takes balls out, doesn't it? Empty balls, but it, it takes balls. <laughs> I'm not bothered about dates anymore, guys. I'm in my 30s, so it's all changed. I'm just, I'm more bothered about property. That's my big thing now, getting on the ladder. A lot of changes in my 30s. I injured my foot the other day, just walking around. That's a new one. Just, people are like, how'd you do that? We in the gym. No, I was in my 30s. This is my life now. It's, uh, <laughs> lots of positives. I started having baths again. Never had a bath my entire 20s. It was all showers. I was too busy out shagging. <laughs> all right, reading. I was reading, whatever. But now, I love a bath now. I look forward to it all day. That's like the highlight of my day. Technically, not really baths. What it is, it'll start out as a shower, and then I just really want to sit down. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> this is a new thing in my life, just sat in a dry tub, letting water hit me in the head, going, oh, life's harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> is this a shower or a bath? I don't even know anymore. It's a shath. Um, so... <laughs> 
It's weird, isn't it? You sit down in a, in, a, in, a, in a bath, you're having a bath, you sit down in a shower, you're having a breakdown. What's that about? <laughs> I'm fine. That guy just texted him. Don't worry, bro, just trying to do my art here. Don't worry about it. Um, cool. Uh, I thought he'd laugh or something, he didn't. He just carried on ignoring me. Um, it's fine. I don't care. I don't care. I'm in my 30s. Who gives a shit? I know it's not that old being here. Just little changes I've noticed, but like I used to be on it. I'm not bothered about dating. I'm more bothered about proper. It used to be on Tinder. Now I'm all over Zoopla. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's quite similar. You swipe in, you find one you like, you get there. It's nothing like the picture. Do you know what I mean? It's, been, it's a bit smaller than you thought and too many, too many people have been there already. And, uh, and it's uh, damp. Doesn't make sense even, does it? Matter? You get the idea. The garden's overgrown. You get the idea. And, uh, and you can't afford it anyway. So I. I'm to, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm trying to buy. So I'm trying to buy a house in London. When I say buy a house in London, obviously I mean 25% of a one-bedroom flat with a housing scheme. That is the dream for my generation. Just the corner of a shithole. That's all I want because the rent is so high in London, isn't it? It's insane. Some of you looking at me, no, we don't rent, we own it. There's a lot of conservatives here, okay. <laughs> yes, the rent is high, it's helping our buy-to-lets. Um, go free market. But yeah, a lot of them, um, the rent is insane. If I have a friend with a cheap rent now in London, I know there's always going to be a catch, you know what I mean? If he's like, yeah, I'm paying a 350 month in Dolston, mate, it's pretty sweet. I'm like, yeah, what's the catch? He'll be like, oh, nothing. I mean, you know, the landlord's got his own key. He comes in from time to time. It's a little bit inconvenient. And sometimes I wake up and he's inside me, but it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. Beggars can't be choosers. It's an, up, it's an up and coming area. Wrong phrase. And I've been in London. So the jokes are there if you want them, guys. They're not all high, bro. I've been, um, I've been in London too long. I'll be there saying things like, no, mate, but the landlord can't do that, right? He can't just come in and start bumming you whenever he wants. I'm serious. He's got to give 24 hours notice. I've checked, I've checked with Foxtons. That's the minimum notice period to enter a tenant uh, in London. I'm sorry, guys. There are cheap rents around the country. If you, I was up in Leeds there. I asked the girl how much she was paying him in. She told me the amount was so low, I couldn't even understand the figure. I was like, I've been in London too long. I was like, what is that, per minute? Uh, <laughs> then I took my London rent for a studio flat. Tagged into about getting Leeds for the same price. I should have seen the stuff that was coming up. It was like penthouses in the city centre. I was like, oh my God, if I had that house, I'd never go outside. Because I'd be in Leeds. <laughs> Leeds is shit was the point of that one. If you missed it, um, anyone from Leeds? Oh, great city. Um, <laughs> I was just telling this lot. Um, <laughs> that's never worked. Um, I love the north. I'm from the north. I was born in Kendall. I used to live in Newcastle for four years. Any, any Geordies in? Yeah. Oh, really? No. No, all right. <laughs> what a legend. You fooled me there. Uh, don't I look stupid. So, uh, no, it's a great city. I was there four years. I was unemployed most of that time because you want to fit in. And, um, <laughs> I was born in Kendall. Uh, the, the one thing everyone associates with Kendall is racism. Nailed it. Well done, mate. That was good. That was good. No, no. That was a joke for the lefties. So uh, I am. Um, um, <laughs> I might talk about this actually. I've never talked about this. I, I've talked about it once here actually. This is the only place I'll talk about it. Is that uh, the big thing that I'm embarrassed to tell everyone is that I'm actually trying to be a, a Christian. How about that, guys? This is the only gig. I know. I, I can't believe it. it's embarrassing to talk about these days, isn't it? I told, my parents aren't Christian. I told my dad. He was so embarrassed. I had to tell him I was gay just to take the edge off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, was, I was like, Dad, I've met a man. He was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, Yeah, that's him. How do you know? That's him. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, can't say nailed it as a Christian. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, I just threw that in there randomly. I was inspired to be brave by Philip Schofield. So uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I apologise for everything. Um, my dad. Paul, I feel bad for my dad. He didn't. He was bad enough finding out I was a stand-up comedian. Do you know what I mean? My dad, he doesn't think this is a proper career. Can you imagine that? If you could see me now smashing this, that guy on his phone, it changes mine. But um, the, the only thing me and my dad have in common is that we're both disappointed in me. Um, my, my dad was hoping I'd turn out to be a teacher. I was hoping I'd turn out to be adopted. Different goals, isn't it? I feel bad for my dad. He's had to put up with his dad. It's my granddad. He was a very tough working class individual. Went to visit my granddad a while ago. This is 100% true. He went to me, uh, Nikki, when are you going to have kids, eh? I want to be a great granddad. I was like, you're not even a good one, all right? I just, it sounds made up. I I genuinely said that at the time. Best thing I've ever said in my life. My brother pissed himself. <laughs> so did my granddad. Different reasons. Um, I, I'm sorry. I said to him, don't run before you can walk. That was the wrong phrase. He can't run or walk. He can walk. He's just a dickhead. He is. He, he didn't go to my dad's wedding. He used to have fights with my dad growing up. My dog got diabetes. My granddad was like, we have to put it down. It's only fair. Six months later, my granddad got diabetes. I was like, fair is fair, granddad. All right. <laughs> 
So he's dead now. Um, <laughs> this is thanks. Um, this is very unprofessional. I just want to check if there's anything I wanted to say specific things for this night because it's such a cool night. And uh, but I think I've said them all. Yeah. All right. Fuck it. Cool. Um, <laughs> um, the most people live in London here. Then. Yeah. yeah. It's good, isn't it? I've been here. Woo! Thank you. I've been here um, about 10 years myself. If I seem jaded, it's, uh, I sort of, ch- I, you know, I'm from a little village, but I've been in London 10 years. It's changed me as a person. They, like, I'm angry the whole time. You know what I mean? The only way, like, I'm stressed. The only way I can even relax now, right, is by watching someone get trapped in a tube door. That is, <laughs> guys, that is like a lovely massage to me now. I'll just be like, oh my God, crush that tourist again. Oh, that's amazing. Right on the back of his head, that's the perfect spot. Oh, I just feel like myself again. That is lovely. <laughs> That's, that's my favourite moment, they, they think they're fine and with me, and he wasn't, oh that's so good every time. You can always tell the difference between a Londoner and a tourist, because if a, if a tourist sees someone get slammed in a tube door, they always look up and go, oh my god he got slammed in the door, I think he's okay, should we ask him? If a Londoner sees someone get slammed in a tube door, we'll just look up and be like, what a dick, seriously. How selfish is that, getting his head trapped in the door when I'm already late? By 86 seconds, I feel physically sick. That is basically terrorism, as far as I'm concerned. I'm saying, if it wasn't going to cause more delays, I'd just push him on the tracks myself. That's how I feel. <laughs> it's not just me. Do you remember a few years ago, when Boris Johnson told the taxi driver to fuck off and die, and Londoners were like, that's our mayor, that's the guy. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> Claps for Boris, only at this gig. So, uh, um, <laughs> that should be the official slogan of London. Why not visit London? Fuck off and die. Um, I go, great. Someone sneezed the other day and it ruined my entire week. So on the tube, especially in this time with coronavirus. The guy, he was, he was in the, on the tube. He was sat in those seats, you know, like the priority seats for like this pregnant women and stuff. He was sat in those seats like a dickhead. I was sat directly opposite. Doesn't matter why. Um, <laughs> That's the most London joke of all time, if you didn't get that one. It's about the layout of the tube. Um, it's a design joke. Um, I like that little glass pillow you can lean on at the edge. I call it, I call it the glass pillow. It's not even glass. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not a monster. If a pregnant woman comes, I'll do the right thing. I'll tell someone to move. Um, but this guy, this guy, he sneezed. Not yet in the ways that society is accepted, right? Over thousands of years, like the hand, that's the standard one, isn't it? The sleeve is an advanced technique, more hygienic. I'll sometimes keep a fresh tissue in my pocket because I'm a bit of a legend. Um, still single, weird. But this guy, he, he genuinely sneezed like this, with a gap here. What is that? What is this? He's basically created a sniper scope to see his right into my face. Sneezing into my face with deadly accuracy. Anyway, I reported him for hate crime because you've got to do something about these people, guys. See it, say it, sorted. That is my rule. I'm serious. <laughs> I'll tell you the exact moment I realised I, be- I was a proper Londoner. Right? I was on the tube, so I was furious for no reason. You know what I mean? Walking as fast as possible, like trying to get back to my studio flat where no one's waiting for me. All right? like, nowhere to go. We're just angry anyway. Like, get out of the way, I'm trying to do nothing. Just like an, an irrational hatred of anyone within a 10 metre radius. How dare they live and breathe in my city? I am Thanos. Um, but. <laughs> That's what that even means. But the, the worst one is, is when it says one minute to your train, but you can't get there because everyone's just shuffling along in front of you, yeah. taking up the whole thing. I'm not talking about the elderly, all right? They shouldn't even be there. Uh, <laughs> old people, old people shouldn't be on the tube, guys. They should be focusing on trying to stay above ground. Um, right? Anyone? No? That was, that was unleashed, wasn't it? All right, fine. Um, this is when I realised I was a proper Londoner. There was a woman in front of me trying to beat through the oyster ticket machine just with her handbag. Just rubbing her handbag up and down. She, she's going, this, this is odd, why isn't this working? This is like that time I tried to pay for dinner with my shoe. Uh, it doesn't work. Eventually, she got, she got the card out and she beat through properly, but she dropped her glove on the floor at the same time. I know, she didn't notice, she just carried on. I was like, oh shit, I should pick that glove up. Just didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to, I was like, yeah, I'm going to pick it up any minute now. Oh, fuck, I've gone past it, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Why am I a superhero, do you know what I mean? Why it's actually, who am I, Gandhi? So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do anything about it, but I ran into it again, down the escalator, through the tunnel, much further on, she was wearing one glove, and suddenly she was rummaging around in a handbag, looking real, and she had no idea what happened, but I'd watched the whole thing <laughs> unfold. I felt like God. Um, and thank God I did nothing about it, because that's not how it works. But what can, what can I do at that point? Like, excuse me, you just uh, dropped your glove. Oh, thanks a lot. Where, where is it? Way, way back there. Yeah. Welcome to London, bitch. And then she got her head trapped in the tube door. So it was a great day for me, guys. 
<laughs> Amazing day. I think I've got to go, guys. It's been a, I've been Nick Dixon. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm just checking. I did all my specialist jokes for this, and I did. I thought there was more. I really did. Fuck. Um, <laughs> thanks. For, follow me on Instagram at Nick Dixon Comic. Uh, I'm on Twitter, same thing, or TikTok if you're a 13 year old girl. And uh, um, thanks for coming out to see live comedy because there's so many things to see in London. Everyone's like reviewed everything as well. I was looking for my local cinema listings the other day. A guy had reviewed the cinema. Not the movies, the building <laughs> and the management of the building. I tell you what, I actually printed it out and brought it with me because uh, uh, since I've been single, I've had time for the important things. Um, this is, I thought, let's end on this. There's a real review of the, this is a real review of the Odeon where I live. The guy's written, I should expect the concessions are priced astronomically highly, but they don't search you on the way in, so it's easy to smuggle in a tray of sandwiches and a flask of tea. <laughs> Who is doing this at the cinema? Can you imagine this guy on a date, like, hey, should we get some food after this? Don't worry, babe, got it covered, yeah? We've got sandwiches. It's like, all right, what's that in your trousers? Oh, that's just a flask, don't worry about that. Um, just a dick joke, don't overthink it. This guy, this guy had written 30 reviews on Google, 30, 3 0, and I read them all. Because uh, he's a loser, not me. <laughs> What a loser. Who's got that kind of time? Anyway, he reviewed London Zoo. How arrogant is that reviewing animals? Like, yeah, giraffes, three stars, next to a bit long for me. Nice try, nature. Um, my favourite one, he reviewed a bar called The Flying Scotsman, and he's written, terrible beer, but one doesn't visit for the real ale. This place is all about the strippers. <laughs> Alright mate, a bit much in it after the zoo, but he carries on, he goes, it's very much girl next door and a bit like watching your girlfriend strip, but the girls have had some training so it's not totally amateur. <laughs> Alright, good to know mate. <laughs> Plus, they don't search on the way in, so it's easy to smuggle in a chain of sandwiches and a flask of tea. Alright, thank you very much guys. I've been Nick Dixon, thank you very much, have a great one. Cheers.